by split decision and down. All right, today joining us is Josh Cooleybau from Sydney, Australia. He's a UFC featherweight with a record of 10, 1 and 1. Most recently fought at UFC 275 in Singapore. It was an all-time scrap with Sung Woo Choi and came out victorious. Mate, before we get into the fight itself, the right hand was busted up after the fight. There was injuries in the training camp. How are you healing up since then? <laughs> um, <laughs> to be honest, yeah, a little bit up and down. I, mean, I feel like if it's not one thing, it's another. But uh, I think that's the fight game. I think I just got to learn to embrace it. But yeah, it's just if it's if it's not one thing, it's another. So um, yeah, just trying to stay positive, I guess. And yeah, just deal, deal with one thing at a time. <clears throat> The hand itself, mate. How's the hand itself? Um, it's still pretty, still pretty uh, beat up. But um, yeah, I still will find ways to work around it. There's nothing. There's nothing. You know, there's. I don't know if you guys can tell the the size difference in that knuckle and the other knuckle, but uh, yeah, it's, it's it's still pretty busted up. But um, yeah, no, nothing that I can't work around. So yeah. Good to hear, mate. She's a she's a thick boy. That knuckle, eh? <laughs> um, but it's uh, it's obviously healed up enough for you to play some cold the other day with Jamie Larky, man. How was how was that? <laughs> oh yeah, it's good, man. It's good. Uh, he's not he's not the best at it, so uh, I just came. Oh. In, uh, you know, I uh, gave a little bit of pointers. So yeah, he's not the best. He's a uh, lucky. He's good at fighting though. So he's. Uh, what was that? Uh, what was that for? Was that some sort of tournament day that they held or something? Or. No, it was, um, it's like a, a promo for the, the new Modern Warfare 2 that's, that's going to come out. So it's like a, it's like a trial, a trial, you know, how they have their, like the, the demos that come out and it's basically just like a demo and yeah, it's just basically just to like promote the new, the new coming out of the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. So that's basically what it was, a whole bunch of, um, Twitch streamers and, pro gamers that were there and obviously us useless athletes there. So yeah. Rubbing shoulders with A-listers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, well, you, yeah, on just on Jamie for a second, you two have sort of come up through the ranks together since back in the pancreation days. What's that been like? You've obviously still got a pretty, pretty decent bond now. Yeah, man, that's, uh, that's, that's my boy. Jamie, Jamie's my boy, man. We've, uh, we, we've, we've grew up, you know, fighting side by side together. And it's, uh, it's been a really good, like healthy, healthy competition between us two. Cause it's like you win one, I win one, you win one, I win one. And it's like, it's, it's like, we always have to be the, have to have one up on the other. So it's, it's always been that way. And I feel like it's, yeah, it's just, uh, it's been good in, in terms of like building confidence because like, you know, Jamie sees me out there killing it and he just gains confidence because, like, man, like, I train with this guy all the time and, like, you know, we we, we, <laughs> we beat the shit out of each other all the time. So, like, why can't I do that? So, it's like we, we bounce off each other, you know what I mean? We see each other's performances and we're like, fuck, this guy's doing that to Michael Johnson. And then he sees me putting on a good performance against uh, someone with Choi and he's just like, fuck it out. So, I was like, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it, we, we bounce off each other. And so, it's a good, healthy relationship. And, yeah, he's, uh, he's my boy. He seems like a fun bloke to be around, mate. Um, just <laughs> back on, back on, back on your fight for UFC 275. You got snubbed for the fight of the night bonus, and I know it was because of Glover and Jerry in that top card, <laughs> mate. But after a battle like that, that's got to be pretty rough. Oh nah, it's uh, it, it, it's it, that's the thing is that like if you expect to get it, I feel like then you only get you get let down. You know what I mean? I wasn't <laughs> expecting anything, but like. Um, yeah, it, it does suck, but it, I I wasn't expecting a 50k bonus anyway, so I was just like, it wasn't really that big of a deal. But um, just to to put on a show like that, just to show the fans and just show everyone that like, you know, when I come to fight, I want people to tune in. You know, you know what I mean. So <clears throat> whenever my name gets popped up anywhere, people are like, oh yeah, I, I need to go see that guy fight. I need to go see that guy. That guy always fights. Like I want to be like a <clears throat> like somebody that's everyone knows is going to always be entertaining. You know what I mean? So that's, that's my, that's my job. As much as I am a fighter, yes, I'm also in the side of uh, entertainment as well. So that's one thing that I've learned, you know, fighting now in the UFC is that as much as you, you, you have to be a good fighter, you also have to be an entertainer and you also have to be able to sell tickets and put bums on seats and, you know, draw a crowd. So yeah, it's a bit of both. Yeah, just on that, Josh, like, how do you balance that? Because obviously, you know, you are competing at a super high level. Like, you can't just go and have crazy scraps like that every single time. 
and kind of, I guess, have a, you know, reckless strategy towards it. But at the same time, you want to have a really entertaining fight to get fans, man. So how do you kind of balance that? Uh, ask Jamie. Jamie's always getting into the fucking scraps. <laughs> that dude, that dude's always getting, always has to, you know, take a couple of hits for him to finally switch on. Um, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I, I feel like my, my style is exciting as it is. It's just that I'm, I'm just trying to follow a game plan. To, so obviously that I do win, but also like I do it not only just to win, but, but I do this because I love it. You know what I mean? I, I do it because I love to fight someone and uh, yeah, fighting someone just brings it out of me. Sometimes you just, you can't ignore it and you just get in, get involved in these, in these firefights, which is obviously given my, my coaches a, a heart attack, but um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a fine line of balance of like, obviously trying to stick to a game plan and then obviously going out there and having fun as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a balancing act, but at the end of the day, I still have to stay disciplined. I know, I know if I want to stay long in this sport and, and, and keep fighting into my, you know, late thirties, early forties, I have to be smart about, you know, not getting involved and not getting too many hits to the head. So, yeah. So you want to be going to in your thirties or forties. I thought you were here for a, uh, a good time, not a long time after that last fight. What, did, uh, what happened there? What, uh, what turned that around? I want to make money. <laughs> I want to make money. And plus, I don't know what I'll do with myself. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, I feel like fighting is such a big part of my life. And uh, I, I, I feel like I need that. that, that um, I need fighting and, and martial arts in general just for, you know, to keep me on the straight and narrow. So, yeah. Stop you from eating too much KFC, eh? <laughs> it doesn't stop me from eating too much KFC. If anything, <laughs> if anything I train hard, right? And it gives me like that, uh, that like, oh, I deserve, you know, some KFC tonight after <laughs> I drive home from training. I'll go, I'll be like, oh, should I drive, go to the drive through at KFC? I'm like, yeah, I trained hard today. I'll go get KFC. <laughs> <laughs> You've got that little uh, devil on your shoulder, man. <laughs> Uh, me and Chris are having a bit of laugh before because we saw um, on your Instagram story the other day you had the full KFC get up, man. Really trying hard to get that sponsorship. Eh? <laughs> I really do. I really am trying to get that sponsorship, bro. <laughs> but it's just funny because uh, it's it's just become a thing now. It's like it, it was literally just uh, someone asking me how what I like the most to eat, like what's my favorite post fire, what's my favorite thing that I crave when I'm cutting weight, and I've always said that it's it's either KFC or beer, and so I just ran with it. You know what I mean? And and after <laughs> Uh, my fight in Vegas. One of the blokes bought me a tracksuit. It was a part of the bet. He goes, "If you win this, if you win this fight, I'll buy you a tracksuit." So that's how it started. He bought me a tracksuit. I didn't know if he was actually going to buy it, but he was a man of his word, and he uh, bought me a tracksuit. So I just started wearing a tracksuit around, and then everyone started to catch on with this tracksuit. Oh, he really does love KFC, but it's <laughs> now I'm just I mean, I'm just egging it on. I'm just putting it on now. But I do like I KFC. It. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not that obsessed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that that new suit the one that you put up the other day that doesn't look like it's off the rack either that looks like it's a custom made top shelf piece it looks it looks legit, I don't know. I don't know. they they sent that to me and there was um it was like um they said to use it like for the next media day and like they just like sent me a nice little letter saying like oh you know thank you for for supporting us we'd like to support you by sending you some goodies and and yeah but i don't know there's some merchandise that yeah like i don't know it was just That's yeah, that's pretty fucking cool. Regardless, um, so on to last fight. That was the last. Sorry, last fight of the contract was uh, against Sung Woo Choi. Rough camp. It was a big pay per view. How much does that win mean to you? With you know, with all that in hindsight, it's massive, man. It's massive mm -hmm. because um, yeah, like to be honest, I think uh, if I was to have lost that fight and probably got cut from the UFC. I probably would have stopped fighting. I feel like, you know, I made it to the top, but I, I just wasn't good enough to stay at the top, you know, in the, t in the, in the elite of the elite. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I probably would have stopped fighting to be honest. Cause it's, uh, it's a, it's, it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing. You know what I mean? Going, putting your body through that. And, and, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing. And I, I feel like, yeah, life moves on, and I just thought maybe if I, I wasn't good enough, you know, it's like one of those realizations. Like if you if you're good enough, if you're not good enough, then you sort of gotta realize that you're not good enough. You know what I mean? So it was one of those massive stepping stones where I was like, you know, I'm just gonna go out there and and you know leave it all on the line, regardless of you know how the camp went. Um, 
but yeah, it was a, it was a definitely a big thing. There's a lot of pressure on my shoulders. Um, last fight in the contract, not sure if I was going to get re-signed or not. Um, yeah, it was a lot of a lot of pressure. I was fighting a really good guy, a guy that, um, you know, is known for for knocking a lot of people out. So yeah, there's a lot of pressure going into that, and yeah, I'm just glad that it all worked out. You know, all the hard work that I put in actually paid off. So yeah. You said it was a hard ride just to get, an emotional ride, sorry, just to get there. Can you elaborate on that at all? Does that just have to do with the injuries in fight camp or was there something more? Oh, man. There's, there's always – everybody just sees the – everybody just sees the fight, you know what I mean? They don't, they don't see, like, the, 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 the stress, the financial stress, the, the stress on the relationship, the stress on friendships, you know, because you're always in camp. You don't get to see any of your friends, you know. Again, same thing with, with my missus. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't get to – do the things that that you want to do as a you know as a partner like going out and going out to eat dinner you can't do that you know what I mean like, like you, you kind of take the simple things uh in life for granted you know what I mean and when when that gets taken away from you especially when you're in you're in fight camp it's uh yeah it's it's it's, it's very uh stressful so yeah it's uh it, it was a long road and you know being away from the cage not fighting for a year it's uh again it's one of those things that it plays in your head where you feel like am I actually even good enough to be here? You know what I mean? So that was probably one of the biggest things is having, having that in the back of your mind because you haven't fought in so long. And then, you know, um, you're fighting a killer. It's your last, your last fight in your contract. And yeah, it's just a, a lot of, a lot of shit goes, goes on in the, in the background. So yeah, it all adds up. Yeah. A hundred percent. You sort of touched on something there that I did want to bring up a little bit later, but we may as well jump on it now. You'd said in the past, you sort of lose confidence and think you don't belong there, which sort of, you know, relates to what you just said then, but it's a double-edged sword because you need more time to prepare and recover at the, at the upper echelons at the top level of the sport. How do you strike that good balance between, you know, not getting ring rust for lack of a better word, or, you know, not losing your confidence? How do you, how do you find a balance between that and, you know, <clears throat> staying prepared at the high levels? Um. I don't know. It's a. It. I feel like you, you only really gain the confidence from your your training, to be honest. And it, you, you know when you when you've been half assing some sessions, and you can you, you just deep down, it's just one of those things where you know whether you're doing the right thing or not. And that's probably where I gain my confidence from is that knowing that I don't I don't cut the corners, like when the coach tells you to do. 20 burpees, you know, and he's not looking, you, they're not counting your burpees, you know, you may slack off to 15, you know what I mean? I'm not that type of guy, you know? So that's probably one of the, one of the ways that I, I, I gain my confidence is not, he's not from cutting corners. He tells me to do something. I'll go do some, do what he tells me to do. You know what I mean? So that's probably one of them. And um, I train with, with really good guys. Like I was just saying to you before, like I get to train with Jamie, I get to train with Volk. You know what I mean? I get to train with, with Martin Ewan, you know, I get to train with all these good guys. My main training partner, Al, Alan Philpott, he's, he's had 51 fights, you know what I mean? So he's seen it all, you know. Um, I gain confidence from my coaches as well. They, these guys are wizards in what they do. You know, they, they haven't just jumped on the trend to become a coach. You know I mean, they've been doing it their, their whole life. So I gain a lot of confidence from a lot of different things. So, yeah, it's it, but it's also, I feel like it's my personality that I feel like I always have to be, what's the word like uh, putting myself down I can make myself feel like I I need to prove something like I it's mm -hmm. it's like I yeah like like I was just saying like I, I it feels like sometimes I don't deserve to be in there like whether I'm good or not or, or not to be in, in the UFC fighting against these guys so it's like I kind of put myself down it, it works like in both ways because like it, it kind of makes me feel like fuck maybe I'm not good enough but then also makes me work hard because it like I need to prove it you know what I mean I need to prove it to myself so I train my ass off for it so yeah it, it works both ways mm -hmm. Josh after your last performance man against such a killer on such a big stage I think you totally proved to everybody that you definitely deserve to be there man and actually doing a bit of research um, for this interview I actually stumbled across maybe your post fight uh, interview with Laura Senko on YouTube, uh, which is a great, great interview, by the way. And just wanted to shout out some of the comments, I guess, of support for you, man. Um, so let's go uh, with the first one. The first one is proud to be Filipino. Um, nice one, Josh and Team Eagle MMA. Let's fucking go. 
<laughs> it's great to finally have Filipino representation since Philip Nova, Mark Munoz, and Brandon Vera. Yeah. Um, he's Filipino too. That's so cool. Someone in the USC with my nationality, USC is the best. Yeah. Josh is handsome and he got a beautiful smile. <laughs> 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 what a smiley guy. <laughs> God damn, he's handsome as fuck. <laughs> fuck it up. Uh, Laura is this, is this all just giving you a big head or like? Nah, bro. <laughs> nah, it's, that's on to me. It's all white noise, bro. It's all white noise. <laughs> but yeah, man, like one thing that really stuck out to me too is I guess, um, you know, you're really kind of garnering a lot of support back in the Philippines as well. And I guess for you, how does that, how does that feel to be kind of representing a country that's a little bit underrepresented in the UFC? Man, like I, I said in a previous interview is I was like, I'm, I'm, I, I, I kind of embrace it. I really, I really enjoy having that extra weight, you know, of, of the Philippines, representing the Philippines on the world stage. You know what I mean? Not many Filipinos have ever made it to fight in the UFC. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's like a real big thing to, to represent the Filipinos because I remember when I was younger and I was watching, you know, Mark Munoz, like the, the guys, those names, like Mark Munoz, Brandon Vera, they're, they were inspirations to me because they were Filipino and it gave me that, that, um, you know, that encouragement also like, Oh, these guys are Filipino. If they're Filipino and they're fighting in the UFC. I can do the same thing, you know? So it was, yeah. Like I want to be also that, t t that type of, uh, I'm going to be me, but I'm also want to be that, that guy that, um, you know, inspires the next generation of Filipinos to also chase being in the UFC, especially the, the young up and coming fighters that are Filipino that, that, you know, aspire to be in the UFC, aspire to be a UFC champion, you know? So that's, um, that's, that's a, that's a big thing for me. I, I really, I really enjoy having that weight on my shoulders. Yeah, mate, you ended up in the uh, national news over there over that la after that last fight with Sung Woo Choi. What was your reaction to that? That's going to feel, you know, yeah, it's man. pretty big. Yeah, man. Uh, it's crazy because I, I got like so many messages from, because I, no, I have no immediate family here in Australia. They're basically my only oh, family right. that I have here. My only family that I have here is, is my brothers and my mom. That's it. You know, and the rest of my family is all in the Philippines. So I got no, I got no immediate family besides my brothers and my, my mom and my brothers. So, uh, yeah. And then I get messages from all my cousins and aunties and uncles saying that like, yeah, I made the news. They're all just watching the news. And then my name popped up and, you know, obviously they're so proud to have the cool about name, you know, show up on the, on national TV over there. So they you know, it's definitely, um, a, a proud, a proud cool about moment for, for my family. So, um, yeah it's it's always been a it's always been a goal of my um my dad he's always he's always been um very adamant about trying to push the cool down name regardless of whatever it was but to always be like you know be a proud cool about when when, when the rest of our family sees cool about it's like it's like yes be proud to be a, a filipino be proud to be cool about you know what i mean so that's what that's one thing that my dad's always pushed so that's i'm glad that i'm sort of you know doing that a little bit yeah 100 percent, man <laughs> um back on to the fight like i got us a little bit off track there sorry lads what was going through your head as the um when the split decision was announced <sighs> I was thinking, oh, fuck, not again, man. Straight out, not again. And I was like, surely not. Like, I just thought to myself, surely can't. Like, first two rounds, I dropped him multiple times. You know what I mean? Fair enough, in that last round, he had my back and he was on my back. But other than that, like, there was no other real danger. And I was just thinking to myself, they can't do this to me. Not like this. And I'm like, I can't go, go out like that. I just... But yeah, I'm just glad the fucking the judges, two of the judges, saw it the right way. It's um, it's pretty wild, man. Because looking at that split decision and the judge that scored it against you, they actually gave that first round to um to Wee Choi. So it's pretty pretty insane, given that you did drop him twice. Um, and it seems like these days, man, every 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 weekend there's a dodgy decision at the UFC or whatever. So I'm wondering, in your eyes, what can be done to make the UFC judging a bit better, or what do you think? We need, we need actual we need actual fighters. <laughs> we need ex fighters being judges. You know? Who do, who are these guys that are judging? Honestly. Who the fuck are these guys that are judging? And not only not only that, one one more thing that will probably make these guys, you know, 
um, accountable. Accountable is that like we got to put fines out for these guys. Like, like mm. we, we whether they get like a a three strike warning and then they get booted, or whether they get a fine for for because they they don't. Uh, I feel like these guys don't understand how how big of a role they play in someone's life. Not even mm. just like the, the the one one fight can change your whole life, and that's how I treat it. Literally, I treat I treat every fight like it's gonna be a life changing event. Like one loss leads into another opportunity, it gives you so much more opportunity. A loss, you know, what I mean? you you lose a fight, you you're back to square one. That's how I I look at it. So like every fight is a very life changing uh, opportunity. So for these guys to to get away with these things and and you know. Be, be the, the, the judge of a life changing decision. You know what I mean? It's 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 bullshit. And these guys don't don't get you know they don't get any accountability for it. There's nothing. They don't get in trouble or nothing. So what what happens to them? You know, where us fighters, we're the ones getting the 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 shit end stick of it. So you know, so it has something has to be done. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. Like you just said before, you were thinking about hanging it up if you if you'd lost that fight. And if one other judge had decided maybe you'd lost one of those rounds, that could have been the end of it for you right there. So that's, that is a massive impact to be having on someone's life. Um, that's what I mean. Yeah, and not really understanding the impact that you have. Um, I, actually, I actually know the judge that – I actually know the judge personally. The ju that judge, I know him personally. Do you know where he lives? <laughs> uh, I, I, I know him personally um he uh, uh like I, i've known him for a long time actually i've known him for like i'd say close to like 10 years i feel like he was trying to do the opposite because he's because he was on the card and he yeah. was uh you know he knew me personally i felt like he was trying to be unbiased by being biased yeah. for the other guy you know what i mean like trying overcompensating. Up, trying to, yeah trying to make up make up for it you know what i mean so yeah i feel like that's what he was doing so i messaged him too i messaged him i said to him really like w what other rounds besides the last round did i lose and he hasn't replied and i've known him for a long time we've, we've always been cool we've actually always been cool he's actually he was um he was one of the guys that i, I went I, I went to greece with and we did pancreation where me and jamie were competing in pancreation we he he took the australian team to greece when we competed the world Pan world uh pancreation championships so i've known him for a long time and i messaged him and he yeah he was just like no response because uh, that's gonna feel like a knife Ghosted. in the heart that day eh? yeah, <laughs> yeah um mate we're running a little bit long for time have you got a couple oh, extra bro. maybe no 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 you good. go for it bro we're good bro um so you mentioned after that fight <laughs> that you imagine Choi would be more aggressive. What is it, do you think, that um, that made him hang back a little bit more? I don't know. Um, but maybe, like, the the crowd or maybe the stance switches. Or, um, I, I really don't know because, like, in all of these fights that I've watched and we've studied, he comes out, like you know, comes out hard and, and comes out to look for the, the knockout straight away. And if you rewatch my fight with him, like the first minute, like nothing happens. I actually stand, like at one point I stand still and I, I, I put my hands up. I'm like, well, are you going to come at me now? Like, what are you going to do? Like, <laughs> like that was what, that was like my body gesture. It was like, are you going to do mm. something now? Like you, you come out with everyone else so aggressive. Why can't you do the same thing to me? So like, I kind of gave him that and then, you know, another 30 seconds or another minute passes and then we start getting into it. So, but I, I thought he would be a bit more aggressive. Like, don't get me wrong. I hit him like quite hard and, and rocked him. And he just, he, he, that like, I felt like that's what woke him up and that's what sort of like got him going. So once I started hitting him, I felt like he started to wake up a little bit and started to go, go a bit harder. So, which was good. Uh, you mentioned the stance switching there, Josh, and it's so smooth watching you do it just from orthodox to southpaw, like nothing, man. And um, I'm wondering, like, is that something you train specifically down at, at Eagle, or is that like a gym thing, or is that kind of a Josh Coolidge special? Nah, that's a that's a it's a gym thing. It's a gym thing. Um, it it's, it just blows my mind that guys stick to w one stance um, because if if you can do all all on one stance, right? If I switch now, it changes everything for it changes a lot of different aspects 
of, of what we're doing. You know what I mean? It's basically doubling your weapons. So all the shit you can do in Orthodox, once I switch and I can do all the same shit in Southpaw, you've doubled basically everything that you can do. But for the other person that's fighting you, maybe they've only been training a guy, uh, training for a guy that only stands in Orthodox, right? And they're, they've only seen punches and kicks and takedowns from Orthodox. But then when you switch to Southpaw, um, it's a whole different look for them and they don't see where the punches come from. They don't see where the kicks come from. They don't see where the takedown entries come from. It just becomes, yeah, like it, for them, it's like, it like kind of boggles their mind because they think like, Oh, he was just here one second ago. And then you switched and you're, you're in a, in a different angle. So it's a, uh, I feel like a, a lot of these fighters should, should jump on board with the whole stance switching and, and being able to do everything from both stances. I know it's going to take a lot of time, but that's what we do. We train. So, you know, we train and we drill, so that's what we do. So, be able to do both stances. Do you Being think that's some... <laughs> do yeah. Do you think that's something that's going to be? I mean, the sport will evolve to. That's just pretty much what everyone does at at a certain point. It has to be. Everyone it has to be. At, yeah. at the at the elite level, it has to be. It has to be because, like I said just before, like if you if you imagine imagine game planning for a guy, right? and he stands in one stance and he does a certain thing in this one stance but then when he switches stances he can do it everything but better on the other stance like what are you going to do then you know what i mean like you've been training the, the whole camp for this one guy to be able to stand in this one stance oh yeah i'm going to kick his lead leg i'm going to kick his left leg i'm going to kick his left leg and then all of a sudden he switches stance and now your 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 leg kick that you've been training for the last 8 weeks doesn't work because it's uh, at a different angle and it's going to get checked and your leg's going to get broken. So what happens then? You know what I mean? So yeah, it has to be, everyone has to be able to learn how to be able to switch stages. I feel. Uh, and on the post fight celebrations now, mate, beer, chili crab, spicy stingray. Did you get into any or all of it? <laughs> you know me, bro. I get into all of it. <laughs> I got into all of it. So yeah, it was, it was good. And I'm, <clears throat> I'm glad that we uh, in Singapore, we got to fight early. I got mm. I got done fin finishing fighting around like I'd say like eleven o'clock, eleven or twelve o'clock. Yeah, got finished done with that, and yeah, man, just straight on the bees, straight out <laughs> to the food market. Just yeah, just straight on it, just everywhere, just traveled everywhere, ate all the good food, drank all the bees, and yeah, had a real good time. What do you What do you recommend most in terms of food over there? Man, any I love Asian food, anything with yeah, rice. Okay. Uh, I I can go for it. So, yeah. Uh, but the chili crab was next level, man. It's actually really chili. Is that like, like soft I'm, shell? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 I smash chili all the time, but that chili crab was like proper, like, oh, man. fucking got the, got the sweats and everything. Like, that's how hot it was. <laughs> how did the bowels hold up? <laughs> Is that sorry? How did the bowels hold up? <laughs> oh, yeah. We always talk about that. Oh. Nah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rumor has it you have you hold some sort of record in skull and beers in terms of uh, the fastest in, in, in terms of MMA, MMA fighters in Australia. Hey, um, is there truth to that? Australia, man. Not even in Australia. Oh. I reckon I outscale the whole UFC roster. <laughs> From from the female division to the heavyweight division, I out skull all of them. The only person that I've really, really had a trouble sculling with is Jimmy Crute. Jimmy Crute, he can skull me. And probably I haven't had a skull up yet, but I'd love to have a skull up with Bam Bam. I think he he could he could smash a smash a bee. But um Jimmy yeah, Crute's I'm on a, the uh, he's on the straight and narrow now, isn't he? Yeah, he's been good. He's been good. But yeah. um, he, he said on his, I don't know if you've read his his, uh, his post where he was, um, what was it, six months or something like that? Six months mm. sober. And he said, yeah. except for one night. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that was the one night. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, next, next, time, next time you're up in Brizzy, you got to holler at me because I reckon I can give you a run for your money. Uh, you, drink out of this, you drink out of the schooner or you drink out of the bottle? Schooner. Or a pint. Dep depend depends on the mood. Depends on the mood. Okay. Depends on the mood. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. We'll sort it out. Let's see it up. Um, and so, yeah, after the fight, glossed over for UFC Paris, glossed over for 281. Was there any real talks of getting on those cards or was injury sort of preventing the, any of that the, from happening? Um, 
I was, I, I really thought that like, it's weird. Like right after the fight, I thought like, oh yeah, the knuckle will be sweet. And, and I'll jump straight back into training a week after or two weeks after and I could be straight back in the camp. And man, just like I said, one thing after the other, my knuckle, my wrist, my elbow went, then my shoulder and then my neck. It was like, just like, like a, a whole bunch of shit just going up my arm and, and they're just dealing one thing after another. And then, so I knew that I wasn't going to get on the Paris card, but then I started pushing for <clears throat> Abu Dhabi because Jamie was going to be on Abu Dhabi. Mm-hmm. And that's why I wanted to be on it because Jamie was going to be on it. And me and Jamie, I've always wanted to fight alongside Jamie. So I was like, man, we've been in the UFC long enough and we still haven't fought together on the same card. So I was like, we have to be on the same card together. So we tried to tee it up just didn't happen that way and then i said yes all right well if that's not gonna happen then i want to be on the card with all the other the new zealand all the ckb boys you know might as well make it like an australian new zealand on that team on the on the, the whole card so i was like let's get on that and then i just haven't heard anything back since so yeah i don't i think that's a very unlikely likely thing to happen at this stage Fair enough. So it's safe to say you're not staying ready to uh, to jump in on short notice on that card. I'm still training. Don't get me wrong. I'm still training, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna need some some notice, you know. Especially, like I said, every fight I treat as a as a life changing opportunity, you know. Unless a short notice fight pops up and they're gonna, you know, um, compensate me for, for for taking a fight that you know could be again life changing, I I won't do it. So. Um, Josh, you're sitting just outside the top 15 now. Are you hoping for a ranked opponent next, or what kind of what's your game plan here? Man, I'm in no rush. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in it. I want to fight all the all the all. I feel like there's like going to be a next gener next wave of generational fighters. Like there's all these young kids coming up that's the same age as me. They're they're all like you know everyone looks at them as their next prospects. So there's like there's a few of us. So there's like Sung Woo Choi. There's uh, Nathaniel Wood, there's Charles Jordan, there's uh, who else? There's a few of us. I can't name them right now, but there's there's a lot of these young kids as well that's the same age as me coming through the ranks, and I feel like we're all of us are going to be the next top fifteen soon. So um, any of those guys, I'm 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 in no rush. You know what I mean? Like as much as as much as I'd like to fight ranked guys, all those ranked guys are killers, and you know, again, I want to get paid to be fighting these killers. So. Um, I'm in a rush to, to, to get into the top 15. So, and, and, and I feel like with th- this division, I feel like any any featherweight can beat any featherweight on any given day. I feel like obviously b- besides the top five guys in the in the featherweight division, everyone outside the top five, I feel like any of us could beat any of us on any given day. So, yeah. The, yeah, that man. Even outside of the top fifteen, there's a heap of fun options. Um, me, Damon Jackson was just on the weekend. You had a fight with him scheduled. Is that something you'd still like to? You'd like to get back at some yeah, point? Um, I, I asked for that fight again, and then he just snubbed me and said, "Oh, maybe next year, kid." So I don't know if it was like <laughs> actually maybe, right? maybe he goes maybe and that was an actual next year, or he was like you know being a being a smart, being a smart ass. ass. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But um, I asked for that fight, but then. I sort of feel like he's just a, a he's a he's a leg humper, so um, I probably wouldn't want that fight. He's just gonna come to come to put me up against a cage and hump my leg. So I don't like guys like that, man. If you're gonna come fight, you know, I want the guys that are gonna come fight me. So like Sang Wei Choi, bro, he came in to fight me, and you guys got a fun fight out of it. You know what I mean? So Charles Jordan, he comes to fight. We fought. Everybody thought that was a good fight as well. So um, any guy, any of the guys that come to really fight me, I feel like. Um, we gonna put on a good show. I don't want no. I don't want no guys pushing me up against a fence, breathing down my neck the whole fight. So I'm gonna throw a couple names at you. It doesn't have to be long sentences that you reply with, but I just want to gauge your your interest level in getting a scrap in with them. So Dan Ige sitting at I think 13 or 14 somewhere around. We, that we we're gonna we definitely have to fight. We have to fight. Yeah. Me and him, we have to fight. I like his style. You- I think his style matches up real good against mine. And I just like fighting shorter guys too. So me and him have to fight. Uh, Alex Casares, Casares, sorry, sitting just outside the rankings. Oh, Bruce Lee, right? He's another one, bro. We have to fight. Me and him, we have to fight. I've, I've, I grew up watching him, you know. And he's a he's a guy that you know, I he's 
always been like a very very smiley type of guy like myself and yeah i think it, me and him will be a very very good fight he's just sort of he's a super happy go lucky guy isn't he? he's, he's, he's just so watch, happy man. even in the cage man he's like smiling at you and shit and he's very um i feel like he's a very cool guy outside of the cage i know he's he he's real chill and he's real like uh into I feel like he's really into smoking weed and mushrooms and real zen, you know what I mean? He's like, he's one of those, mm-hmm. like, he's very hippie, you know what I mean? I feel like he's a real cool guy to hang out with, you know? So, um, yeah, I'd like to fight him. <laughs> um, a little bit of left field with this one, but I actually personally think it'd be a fantastic fight. Nate Landwehr. Ooh, Coming off two wins. That hillbilly redneck. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Um, <sighs> man. I think that'd be a sick fight too. I think he comes to fight too. Like, and if he's gonna take me down, he's gonna look to take me down and hurt me. You know, he's not just gonna look to hold me. Uh, he's a he's a tough dude. He's a tough dude. He's he just he reminds me of like a the newer version of Darren Elkins. You know what I mean? Mm. He's a, he's the the uh, Darren Elkins 2.0s where he's like a guy that needs to be hit to you know needs to be rocked a little bit to to switch on. Like his last fight was wow. His his last fight with um. I can't remember his name now, but he was getting bashed. And, um, yeah, he, uh, he, he, he needed to get bashed to turn on, you know what I mean? And, he, and then he just poured it on the last two rounds. So, uh, yeah, he'd be an awesome fight too. All these guys, Dan Ige, Alex Caceres, and now Nate, the train. So, yeah, all good fights, man. Some real fun fights sitting outside of that top 15 there. Um, something I did want to touch on before we let you go, your first fight was against Michael Moss in the amateurs at, at welterweight on tapology. Anyway, I'm not sure if there's, if there's any before that. Mate, I've, I've spoken to Michael Moss before I've interviewed him. He's a big lad at welterweight. He's built like a brick shit. House. I, don't, I don't think he's a welterweight now. I think he's a middleweight now. That's right. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think he is even still like what, what was, did you plan on fighting at a heavier weight when you first come in? Man, I didn't know anything about nutrition. So this was back in yeah, the day yeah. where, like, fuck, I didn't care about weight division. This was just all about – I just wanted to fight. Like I said, I just like to fight. I was probably – how old would I have been? 2000, I was, like, 2013 or something like that. I'm pretty sure. So that's 15 years ago. Wait, no. 13, fucking nine years ago. Sorry, 15. Years <laughs> <laughs> You're a veteran, Russ. Um, yeah, so I was, like – 19 at the time when i fought him <clears throat> and i just wanted to fight to be honest so yeah. i basically i remember that i remember that fight um that weigh-in like basically i didn't eat that morning and i just went to the weigh-ins and that was it and we fought and uh yeah he, i feel like i i, I remember he, someone said to me something about him claiming like oh he's he beat josh cool about like man if that's your claim to fame bro back when we were amateurs nine years ago well Man, you need to you need to get more accolades underneath your belt because, bro, you can't be claiming fighting a nineteen-year-old fat, out of shape Josh Coolabell, and that's your claim to <laughs> fame just because I'm in the UFC now. Fuck. Uh, yeah, uh, that is about it from me. I'm sure I could keep 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 uh, asking you questions, <laughs> but I'll let you go at some point. Tristan, do you have anything else to round out the uh, the interview this morning? Yeah, just last one, Josh, real quick. I'm um, talking about before how a lot of new prospects come on through, new generation. Obviously, the old generation is kind of, you know, getting there and retiring. <coughs> Somebody who retired this this week is actually Jose Aldo, and I just want your thoughts on that and if you consider him the, the featherweight goat. Man, to me, he is the featherweight goat. Uh, man, I grew up watching that guy from these WEC days, you know, to his double flying knee of Cub Swanson, to him coming in. You know, smashing Mark Hominick, putting that massive lump on Mark Hominick's head, to ba- bashing, you know, Kenny Florian, you know, fucking up Green Zombie. Like, man, he's the man. And he was still to this day, like, putting it on everyone. Like, the only guys he's ever really lost to were champions, or soon to be mm-hmm. champions, like Vulcan, Connor. And then he went down a weight division, bro. And then he was still smashing everyone in the band and weight division as well. Man, he's, he's, that's 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 one of those legacies that I want to you know I want to leave leave behind when I'm done fighting. He's he's fucking what a guy, man. Honestly, what a guy. Like that guy, he's such an inspiration. He's 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 one of my favorite fighters of all time. One of my favorite fighters of all time. That 
that famous low kick of his, you know, that yeah. very slick head movement, that very cat-like reflexes whenever he got taken down, always ending up back on his feet. You know, his wars with Chad Mendes. Uh, man, what a what a career, what a man, just what a fighter. And, dude, like, I can't say anything anything but, but good shit about that guy. That guy's he, – he's one of those inspirations as well that I grew up. And he's – yeah, he's the man for sure. Awesome. Thank you very much for your time today, Josh, man. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Hopefully, see you back, well, early next year, you reckon? Man, yeah. Either early next year or maybe we can squeeze one more by the end of this year. Hopefully. Fingers fingers crossed for you, brother. Fingers crossed. All right. You enjoy the rest of the day. Get back to training right. and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll chat to you again soon. Cheers, bro. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Thanks, Chris. Thanks, brother. See you guys. See you,